yellow zone, or no, up red zone. I the red zone. Yeah. The second that thin, that twenty foot portion went down into the yellow zone, and then the plane continued to fly oh, for a wings. short time yeah. with its wings on, and eventually crashed. And I know that. That's the crazy thing because well, a lot of people are like that that doesn't make any sense. I'm I'm on board with this whole, you know, the wings floated situation, but I'm not I don't understand how a fire in the wings causes an explosion that first tears off the nose and then tears off this oh. other piece. Okay, let, wait, let, let me re I I may have glossed over that in the in the wrong in a bad way. It's the center wing tank, the part of the a tank that is in the body of the plane, not in the wings. It connects the two wings. So it's the center of the plane. It's between oh. the two wings. Center so, wing tank makes me think it's the tank in the middle of in the, the middle. Yeah. Wing. Oh yeah, no. no. So so when between it's in the, the body of the plane and it explodes, that's why it popped the front of the plane off. Okay, and it's in the middle of the plane? Mm-hmm. From, yeah. from okay. left to right, the full okay. width of it. Yeah, think of the wings as a, as a unified structure. Left, right. Left, right, and everything, just one solid structure right. with the, the plane I'm on, I, yeah, on I, yeah. yeah, I got it. I yeah. just, I but I still am, like, not totally, it, I mean, it's fine, but I don't totally understand how the front two parts exploded into, like, two different things and why the front you would, it doesn't matter you know what it's it's all in the way that i've read it a couple of times and it's yeah. still tough to figure out yeah why it really well is. and this is yeah. this is where you can kind of see why like people don't believe this yeah because yeah. it doesn't the, totally uh, make sense i'm sure if you are a scientist about something like this or an expert in something like this it does make sense but for like us uh, you know laymen this is like super counterintuitive and still kind of like I mean I guess that makes sense but only because you said it's super sciencey so <laughs> uh, but the uh, th- thing is is that um, it, it does it, is, it does seem a little odd that the entire nose of a 747 could come off because of an explosion in the center wing tank yeah. But at the same time, uh, that wouldn't be explained by the missile theory either, which is unless the uh, missile hit. Unless it was a, an enormous nose, freaking missile bigger than anybody's gonna... talking about. Yep. Yeah, and you're jumping a little head on oh, us. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead, but but yeah. So yes. I mean, actually, I mean, I, it's actually more easily explained by the explosion of the Senate wing tank. Than, although, in theory, you can, you can encompass both those things: the missile and the explosion in the Senate wing tank. Mm-hmm. So as Joe but, has you know, given away, one of our theories, yeah. actually multiple theories, no, is that no, the plane no. was hit by a. a a missile? Well, no, I mean, that's, some that's, kind. Out, that's okay. out there big time. Anyway. I'll keep my but, yeah. favorite theory a secret until later. Okay. What is, what is it? So. You can tell me, whisper it. Here's the thing. The NTSB says that from explosion to final crash, the plane was in the air for approximately 47 to 54 seconds. So explosion happens, that front bit falls off, and the plane continues in a forward trajectory. They said that it was after three to five seconds after that explosion, the plane rolled and actually started to climb. So it actually went upwards. Mm -hmm. And according to their analysis, they say that it it initially was at 13,800 feet, which is 4,200 meters, when the explosion happened. And it climbed to somewhere between 15 to 16,000 feet in elevation which is a 12 to 2200 foot climb Uh, that's 365 to 670 meters which is weird but at that point the fire had continued through the plane and you know then bits of it are falling off and that's why we've got the wreckage spread the way that it is over the debris field so when the soaring was happening this was before the plane broke apart is that true no no front of plane comes off and, and then the plane it continues to fly and actually up. rolls and goes upwards. I know. I know. It sounds weird. Because I was willing to say, well, maybe the pilots were like, wow, we're on fire. And I think or when they're on fire, aren't they supposed to go up because there's less air? So it'll maybe... That if they're at high enough altitude, they can't do that to extinguish it. But the, yeah. the pilots yeah. were already exploding. Right. But that's... But that was... My thought was like, okay, that makes sense. The pilots were like, oh, God, we got it. I think it was... Yeah. It was no. like, I don't think there was fire in that explosion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were yeah. already exploded. It was yeah. just the... The One back fuselage of the airplane somehow going like a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand feet up? Twelve hundred to twenty-two hundred. 
Oh, 1,000 to 2,000. Let's just round it out that way. Yeah. That's okay. crazy. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, not and, actually that crazy when you think about it. Well, yeah, and, the, and the, I, you know. we'll get to it because I have, some, yeah, we'll I have some weird quirks with it. Um, so the NTSB, they say that, listen, those things that the witnesses saw, you know, that, that stuff going upwards from the horizon, actually that was the plane itself post-explosion. And what they say is that when the plane exploded, it would have begun to vent fuel, which was on fire, which would create a white cloud behind it. So the people who say they saw it come from the horizon, they may have presumed they saw it from the horizon, but it may have actually been somewhere in the distance and not truly on the horizon. And that weird trail that they saw was burning fuel that would make that white cloud and that they would watch that rise upwards because the plane is now gaining altitude. It's going sharply upwards, very sharply. Before it then has its final explosion, which is then the explosion they see, and then they see the plane falling and splitting as the fuselage is breaking apart and the wings are shearing off. Okay, that's their official explanation of what they say people saw. Now, I... I, I I don't know. I mean, it's I understand what Devin's saying because it's just weird that two thirds of the plane should continue on. And I know Joe, mm-hmm. you don't think it's weird. I I'm 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 in the middle of the road on this, uh, but it's a it's an amazing series of events. And like we said, that's why people don't really believe it. It and seems now, just outlandish. One of the things that I I really haven't seen is there. You know, I've seen a map of all. The locations of the different witness sightings, and I've read all the, the various numbers of people who said, "Okay, I think it rose from the horizon," and other people said, "Well, I think it started about halfway up from the horizon." I want to know where those people were, because I, I'm suspecting the guys, the people who said I saw it come from the horizon, were probably well inland, and the guys who said they saw it start about halfway up were probably on the beach. But I mean, we'd have to know. I mean, and nobody—I've never seen any analysis of this that actually tries to break it out by. You know, these people were way over here, and here's where they saw it originate. And I'd like to see that. And, that would be and, very interesting. And that uh, would totally I, be I interesting. have no idea if the government even knows this. Uh, I mean, yeah, hopefully I, you would think they would have analyzed that whole thing. Because you, that's would think, kind of a, you would hope. It's a worthwhile piece of information. Right? You would definitely yeah. hope. So that's, that's the end of this portion of the story. By the way, don't worry. They they went ahead and they, they fixed in all 747s that wire and that could potentially them, make yeah. that explosion happen. Yeah, I think they, they now, they're, now they're pumping nitrogen into those tanks uh, so that the fuel vapor can't ignite. Mm-hmm. There's no air in there. Well, that was the thing. They were like, listen, it was July. It was hot as hell and they yeah. sat on the tarmac for an hour, so no wonder there was vapor in that tank. Well, but plus also apparently the center wind tank is over there's a... The, air conditioning unit? Yeah, there's a big air conditioning unit that's got, uh, and so it's a, one of the major heat sources on it's the a plane. Heat sink, it's yeah. a huge heat sink, yeah, right underneath that tank, and so that generated tons of heat too. That uh, is that still true? Uh, as far as I know, it's still there. They might have added a little layer of insulation or something That's like that. That's interesting. Yeah. I have always felt like the air on airplanes makes me feel really, really nauseous in the same way that, like, having my window open at a gas station makes me feel really, really nauseous. Uh-huh. And that is maybe now connecting in my brain that actually maybe it's because there's some... A little some, bit of jet fuel. Like, a, maybe a little bit of commingling. That's actually yeah. just the sedative that they pump into the airplane to keep it's- you... For me, it's kind of psychosomatic because I realize I'm just breathing in all the filth and germs from all these No, it definitely people, smells know. different. <laughs> yeah. It definitely does. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that is the end of the story at this point, as I said. So we should probably get into theories. Ooh. Let's look at the theories. Let's continue on, actually, with what's from the NTSB. And let's go with the official theory, which is it truly was an accident. One of the things that the NTSB pointed out uh, to back up their findings was the cockpit voice recorder and I mentioned this earlier that the one of the pilots had talked about the crazy readings that he was getting on the gauge for the center wing tank mm-hmm. uh, so they they said well look that obviously means that something was going on because the, the gauge was bouncing all around another thing that they would say is that when they examined the, the, the skin of the plane you know the, the outside of the plane they would see no entrance or exit wounds on it, and there were no signs of melted metal. 
And melted metal is important because if there's a high explosive that impacts the plane, it's going to create very intense heat, which is going to melt the skin of the airplane and throw slag everywhere. Kind of like, you know, if you ever see a guy arc welding, stuff splatters everywhere. Oh, yeah, you get those little beads all over the place. Right, and they said, well, you should see that if a missile or some kind of high explosive were used on the outs to cause it from the exterior of the plane, not happening from the inside. Now, what I really want to know is what the smirk on Devin's face is because she is holding back really, really hard. I just really love that they're like, yeah, jet jet fuel doesn't melt metal like that. <laughs> no, no. It doesn't have, it doesn't leave the same kind of patterns. It's I just, really what it's all it's, about. It doesn't. I'm just saying. Uh, I, all I can say is that I love that the NTSA was like, or NTSB was like, uh, yeah, no. Jet fuel doesn't melt metal. Okay. No, of course not. That's all. That's all I was okay, talking about. Good, I'm sorry. good. Um, so here's now, of course, in their official explanation, we've talked about this a couple of times, is that it, it seems really weird that this plane rose after the explosion. I mean, if you think about it, you know how we've all made paper airplanes, mm-hmm. and you throw them, and they fly straight for a while, and then they nosedive, but if you cut off the front, I don't know, quarter or so, and then chuck it, it should just start spiraling down you right did this, away. You did this in the office, didn't you? Uh, no, you but I have here. done this before. I've never done scale that. scale model 747. Yeah. Then I cut the know. nose off. Yeah, yep. with an axe. And threw it. Yeah. yeah. And was like, ah. See, that's actually my favorite theory, is that it was actually just Thor with his hammer Thor's axe. on accident. Yeah. Just cut it off. Yeah. Oops. Whoops. Uh, yeah. walk away now. Yeah. And that's why it rose because the, the hammer was still stuck under it and it was yeah. like taking it up <laughs> so in the air. Whoosh, yeah. off the Valhalla or theory. Ragnarok or yeah. wherever it's yeah. supposed to go. Uh, well, you know, but I mean, we, I think we mentioned this earlier. The reason that it seems so weird that the plane rose is that by taking off the nose of the plane, you're moving the center of gravity, which should screw it up to a point that it should not be able to have lift. But like, Joe doesn't uh, believe that. No, I don't believe that at all because you're moving the center of gravity backwards mm-hmm. or behind the wings which drops the tail and well, points the, the nose upward i guess what i yeah. th- the reason i say that though is that if the wings are still chucked full of all of that fuel and you mm. move the center of gravity the wings are now the heavy point they should actually tip it forward now the wings not, are, the not wings cause are, it to lift the wings are the fulcrum of the plane the without the, the nose, without the front half. Without the nose, yeah. The wings are the fulcrum. That's what the plane balances on. When it's fully assembled. When it's fully assembled, yeah. And so you take away that that half on the right side of the wings, and then the other half goes boink, down. So the point is that the fulcrum can never be the heaviest point, right? Because that's what it doesn't what matter it's... what the fulcrum weighs. The so fulcrum can be light, it can be. It heavy. will always it be matter. the center, it's at the center of, gravity. of gravity. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Okay. And so, but and so. Because it's what also, it's floating on. We, what it's floating yeah. on can't be the heaviest part yeah. ever. But uh, and that's that's the thing is that it just to me it seems strange that oh I absolutely agree I, I see what you're saying but but and try to remember also that this is another reason I don't it's find also it also has a hell of a lot of feet well more than that I mean they were at about I think thirteen thousand feet yeah. and thirteen thousand eight hundred they, they, they had just gotten orders from the tower to, to go to fifteen thousand mm-hmm. and so uh, undoubtedly the pilots then you know goose the gas they they goose the throttles and then the plane blows up so they're they're you know it's going it's it's, it's powering up going fast and then all of a sudden the tail just drops because all that weight's falling off the front of the plane. So yeah, it's going to go upwards until it either stalls or blows up. Yeah, one or okay. the other. Yeah. I mean, so here's a, a stat that might help. It's still, I still struggle with that, Joe, but I'm not going to say that you're not that you're wrong. I don't know, to be quite honest. But I do know that the plane, they have the ability, the 747s, to rise, uh-huh. to climb, Somewhere between 5,600 and 6,400 feet per minute, which is pretty good climb. Uh, and for our folks who work on the uh, the Imperial system, no, we are on the Imperial system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The on the metric system. system. It's named yeah. after the thing. It's, it yeah, is. I know. I've, I I brain farted. Uh, that would be 1,700 to 1,950 meters uh, per second. Mm-hmm. Or per minute, yeah. Uh, climbing, so I mean, it, it, you're right. It, it it could have gone up, and it could have continued onwards yeah, like that. There is a huge amount of thrust in those in those engines, and yeah, when you when you take away that whole nose section, that's a lot of weight. Yeah, that's all you know. It's serious a lot of weight, and all those passengers too, you know, and all the luggage and everything else. I mean, all that weight just 
gone, you know. And plus, the pilot just goosed the throttle, so yeah. I can totally so the, see that thing and climbing. The assumption is, I don't know enough about how planes work with like electronics and blah blah. blah no. That the throttle would stay open, despite the fact that the computer that's controlling the throttle may no longer yeah. be disconnected. Well, that's, that's, connected. that's the thing I don't quite get. Is that uh, is that I, I think that on those, those planes, I'm not sure if these cables or if it's entirely computers, wires, and everything. I, I thought that they had backup cables and all kinds of things, like mechanical, hydraulic. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not willing to venture. I don't. I don't really know because I you mean, would think that if the computer stopped communicating with the plane, it would it would stop. Well, accelerating. You would think though that in you know, autumn that occurred that seems to me too, safer. But, it, but well, no. At the same time, though, I mean, you want the engines to keep going no matter what. You don't want the engines going. Oh well, I'm not detecting the cockpit. I think I'll just shut down over. The- you don't want them yeah. going like, all right, full steam oh, ahead. Woo! I, know, I know. Or like whatever you told me last. I, I kind of. That. But I'm kind of thinking that they are probably designed to keep going no matter what. You right. Know, until until they get the, the you know hey really shut down first do something right because you can't have your engines just decide hey they can shut down you can't I guess can't. I just think like but, there's but yeah I don't I know it all it, middle it, ground I, somewhere and, I don't and really that, know. That the the value or the importance of that may be negligible because remember post explosion we've got about 40 or 50 seconds of flight time so it could have just been Con, you know, it had begun inertia. to climb, and so the inertia carried it. We don't know. True. Yeah. Um, what we do know is that there is a ton of radar evidence available that track the flight. If I remember right, it's like three or four, at least three or four different radar locations were tracking the plane, not just JFK. And they they seemed... Okay, so there's a... I'm, we're going to talk about this a couple of times, but there's a documentary that came out in 2013 about TWA mm-hmm. and it's a bit sensationalist at times but they make a lot about the final moments of the plane and the radar information that's out there but that radar information tracks both the plane and then post explosion some of its de- debris moving yeah, forward yeah. as it in then plummets down into the ocean uh, so according to that it does seem to indicate that the plane did indeed climb uh, and it, it before it eventually would tip back down and, and crash into the ocean. So or the, blow up. Or, well, I mean, yeah, the, then, the, both of those things happened. Ocean, both of those yeah. things happened, uh, probably in that order. Uh, but another thing that supports their claim is that there were there have been other aircraft that were down supposedly because of this same issue or similar issues with the center wing tank. Um, the NTSB, they conducted some tests and they, they took an old 747 and they pumped the center wing tank, not full of jet fuel, but oh God, it was like propane or something. It was an aerosol fuel and then lit it, ignited it, and it was catastrophic. It did rip that old poor plane apart. Uh, so they were like, well, check that out. This obviously does very similar damage. Mm-hmm. There was two other flights that they referenced in their report. There's, um, which it's the Avianca flight 203, which uh, crashed in 1989. And then the Philippines Airlines flight 143, which crashed in 1990. I will point out it's a little odd that I get why they included it, but the Avianca flight, the one from 1989, that was a bombing. That was a there was a bomb that that blew up and it ignited the center wing tank, which they said the bomb itself probably would not have been enough to take the plane down, but because of where it was. It set the center wing tank off, and that's what brought the plane. I down. feel like their test too of like, listen, we filled it full of propane, which is uh, yeah, it's gonna ignite, yeah. and then we ignited it intentionally with the igniter, and it blew up. Look, it blew up. It's kind of like those people who are like, this recipe sucked uh, because I used peanut butter instead of regular butter, and uh, yeah. I replaced the oatmeal with regular flour, and it was off. Like, it's just... Well, I, I think what they were testing is, like, they wanted to see if... If it would blow up in this. I understand that. Yeah, because that. the tank is, like, yeah, well, so we fill this with something that's going to explode. Is the tank strong enough to hold all that pressure in sure. until it suddenly just fails catastrophically? But that's only half of the big equation there, right? They yeah. also have to prove that that one little fuse 
the wire. could the wire. Or wire or whatever yeah. could also ignite on however much well they were pretty sure gas. prior to this that it couldn't do that right and but then, and yeah. so maybe that's the thing is like that's the part that i feel like i have no doubt that if you put a bomb on a fuel or on a fuel tank yeah. it will explode a plane yeah okay I, little, I'm not questioning little, that part of it, but, but I am. Thing, that's yeah. what I'm questioning, and so uh, that's my big problem with this and that test they did, where they're like, "Yeah, we put a super explosive thing in the tank. It exploded. The plane exploded. Yeah. It's closed." That's not the big question, though. You missed the, the point. The question is, yeah, the igni- is not the explosive; it's the igniter. Yeah, the, 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 it's uh, the method of ignition. Yeah. yeah, and actually, the I mean, the, 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 their theory about that, which essentially is this.